Fifty years ago, on February 10, 1967, the 25th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was ratified, clarifying presidential and vice presidential succession in case of a vacancy in office. Here's a segment from an American Artifacts program recorded in the National Archives. Uh, William Harrison was our first president to die in office, uh, and the Constitution indicates that the vice president would assume the role of presidency. However, the Constitution is silent on pretty much everything else after that. So Congress wasn't really sure uh, what the VP, the vice president John Tyler, was to be called. Was he president? Was he acting president? What exactly did all this mean? Um, it's a question that lingered on until the late uh, half of the 20th century. It wasn't until um, John F. Kennedy, President Kennedy was assassinated and Lyndon B. Johnson stepped up to become president that uh, enough support was galvanized to really answer this. Um, over the course of that time, from 1841 till the 25th Amendment was ratified, if you combine the years where we had no vice president, um, you, you would get to 38 years that we had no vice president. Um, so the 25th Amendment was ratified, and uh, thank goodness, because it wasn't long after, that we now have um, President Nixon and Vice President Spiro Agnew in office. Spiro Agnew resigns. President Nixon uses the 25th Amendment to appoint a vice president. He ended up appointing Pre uh, Gerald Ford. Just a year later, President Nixon resigns. Now President Ford uses the 25th Amendment to appoint his own VP. However, if the 25th Amendment had not existed, there would have been a huge political crisis on our hands. Uh, we would not have really had somebody representing the presidency who was, uh, who was voted by a majority of the country. It would have been someone who was voted by a very small um, majority, actually, of a state. Uh, so the 25th Amendment uh, finally resolved a uh, big question mark that the Constitution did not quite answer at the time. This is a motion to amend the resolution to strike out uh, president and insert vice president now exercising the office of president. So this is what was submitted after William Harrison, President Harrison died in office and Vice President John Taylor took office. Um, this is a photo of Lyndon B. Johnson aboard Air Force One taking the oath of office to become president of the United States. And then here is a really um, interesting letter that talks or that delves more into the um, intricacies of what uh, President Nixon was doing, where he asked Gerald Ford to recommend um, three people on who he thought should be his vice president. Uh, so Gerald Ford does list, he actually gives him four choices, which you can see here. Um, and as we know, President Nixon ended up picking Ford anyway. You can learn more about this exhibit and the Constitution by visiting archives.gov slash amending dash America, where you can download a free ebook companion to the exhibit.